Hello, my name is Kai Santala and I am a recreation therapist on the intensive rehabilitation unit. Today we will be talking about uh, we're for stroke education, living with the stroke. So let us begin. So topics of discussion, what will life be like after the hospital? Will I still enjoy my old interests? Uh, will I still be able to meet up with friends? What services will be available? And how will how will I spend my time and will I need help? So to start off promoting healthy living, you want to make lifestyle changes, but how? Uh, so quitting smoking is a very good one to start with. You reduce your uh, chance of getting a stroke or having another stroke significantly. Start exercising. So the importance of exercising, uh, going through uh, uh, exercise routines through your physiotherapist and uh, just safe exercising that uh, you can do to keep yourself active and all of that good stuff. Also too, in exercising new activities. So it is surprising the amount of um, physical benefits that you get from new activities. So different things like uh, taking your dog for a walk, uh, even uh, going bird watching, uh, photography taking outside, uh, going to different things in the community, going to do uh, aquatic therapy or yoga classes, all these different things uh, keep you active and healthy. Even just the thought of going to uh, a, a movie, for example, uh, the you have to get up, you have to get dressed, you have to get ready. You, the travel going to the movie, um, you are yes not active while you're sitting and watching the movie but all of the activity in between getting up and getting out is important and keeps you active and healthier than than staying at home and being less active so leisure time so leisure time is uh, defined by an activity that is not related to work or chores um, usually so there's gray area there so what my interests are might not be the same as your interests. So, uh, for example, someone who uh, my my wife likes to garden. I'm not a fan personally of gardening, but she enjoys gardening. Some people like to do laundry while they watch TV, those sort of things. So whatever the activity is that you find enjoyable um, can help keep you active and uh, is considered your leisure time. Now, normally we think of leisure uh, leisure time as recreational activities. So I play basketball, I go golfing, I'm on the baseball team, uh, those sort of textbook things. But there's so many, so many different things that we do uh, on our free time that promote being physically active and, and healthy uh, more than just your generalized recreational activities. So for example, uh, dr drawing, uh, doing art, knitting, sewing, uh, crossword puzzles, right? There's cognitive cognitive exercise too. Uh, uh, jigsaw puzzles, uh, trivia, uh, online uh, gaming that's, you know, related around uh, cognitive uh, stimulation. Um, what else? There's also, you know, um, gardening, uh, those sort of those sort of activities, those activities, they keep you active and they keep you healthy and they promote that. Um, now, normally what we would do is uh, people de define themselves by what they did or what what you did last night, what you do on the weekend. Normally in a group setting, I would go around and ask everyone what what their leisure activities are. Um, since the format has changed for the time being, what I'm going to do, I'll tell you certain things that I enjoy doing. Um, and relate them to how they keep me physically active and physically healthy. So I personally am uh, musically inclined, so I do a lot of guitar playing and uh, percussion instruments and that sort of thing. And that keeps me uh, cognitively busy uh, and in um, being active in that way, stimulating myself that way. So I'm learning different songs and memorizing different lyrics. Uh, I'm I'm being physically active by playing guitar uh, and the motions involved in that. <clears throat> also too, the gardening does come into play. So I'll do gardening and be in the garden being physically active. Um, 
I've been doing woodworkings and that that uh, that that requires a lot of physical activity and also a lot of cognitive uh, uh, thinking about pre planning, organizing that sort of thing. So there's those are some of the leisure activities that I I do that uh, benefit me both physically and mentally. Leisure after a stroke. So activities can become difficult, even impossible. Your free time may increase by eight to 11 hours per day. You may need help to find meaningful and productive activities. So you've had a stroke and everybody's different. How it affects you is 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 different. And you know, you may your your physical and cognitive level may be affected um, and you might have to look at what you're doing uh, before having the stroke to now and how can you keep active and how can you keep busy and those sort of things, right? Your your free time, you may not be you may not be going uh, to work as often or at all. Uh, you may you may not be going to you know those things that you were before, but that doesn't mean that you can't still be physically and cognitively active. So there's different things in the community that you can go to. Uh, there's right there's aquatic therapy. There's uh, yoga classes. There's Zumba. There's uh, now there's a lot of Zoom classes where you can do physical activity and be at home and connect uh, through Zoom or other social uh, media platforms. <coughs> um, so looking at your free, you may have free time now, but there are alternatives um, to what you are, what you are doing and how you can keep being active and healthy. Um, in saying that you may need help to find meaningful and productive activities um, while you are on our unit. Um, I am around and I, I try and meet with everyone, but if there's anything that you're interested in, feel free to ask your nurse or another therapist um, and I will come and talk to you and we can look at different activities while you're with us um, or in community when, uh, when you go home. Uh, adaptive adaptation show and tell. So you you've had a stroke and, and it's affected you in in whatever manner it has. There are different adaptive devices um, that you can use to uh, be able to still conduct activities that you were doing previously and want to keep doing. So um, I have a few that I can show you, but then we'll go through the list and I can explain some more. But um, so let's say that you uh, participate and go and, and play cards a lot with your friends or your family or you go to groups in the community or you're doing it online now. Um, there are there are different adaptive devices uh, that you can use. Uh, so this here, I hope you can see it, is it's a card shuffler. You could you'd see it at a casino rama. So basically what you do is you put the cards in on each side. So let's say that you your stroke has affected your right side, so you can only use one hand. Uh, this would be a benefit because you can put the cards in with the one hand and you press here and it would shuffle it and the cards would come out. So that's an example of something that you could adapt. Um, so you could shuffle cards. Um, there's also card holders, so you can put your cards in so you don't have to use two hands to hold a card and you can um, you can still see the cards without anybody seeing it and still do that activity. Uh, for knitting, there is here is an example of a holder for needles. So what you would do is you put through the holes, you put your your knitting needle, and then so you'd have it set up like this. I am doing it with two hands because I have to hold it, but you could. We I've tried it with patients before, and you can do it with one hand. So with the one hand, you would cast on, and then you would get it going, and then you would have it on the next needle. So then you would take the next needle and open this up and put it on and clamp it down, and you would keep going like that. And I've worked with people before with uh, using an adaptive device like this. So that's for knitting. Um, also, too, there is, uh, it's called a strong arm. So if you're a fisher, fisher person, you can use this. So let's say that you have range of motion in your hands, but you, your hand strength has been affected. So if you cast, what's going to happen? You might lose the rod. And depending how much you spend on a, on a rod, that, that might not be a fun thing. So something like this 
what you do is you then there's different types, but this one, for example, goes on. And you put it on your arm <laughs> and you put the rod through here. It attaches. So if your hand strength has been affected with this hand, you could still cast the line and reel the rod, reel the line in and right there you go. So you have something and there's also adaptive uh, fishing devices you can put on a wheelchair and that sort of thing. So there's different fishing adaptations. Um, also too, just looks like a simple piece of wood. You can get it in wood form or plastic. There's different places online that you can get all these different leisure ad adaptive devices. This is for pool. Uh, so let's say that you have had a stroke. Um, you are your leg strength has been affected and you're in a wheelchair um, and you your right side has been affected. So you can you could still play pool moving around in the wheelchair. Um, and you could still use the unaffected side arm to take your shot playing pool. So something like this would be like the cheating stick that you have that you can use for longer shots in pool. But what you do is this portion here goes on the on the on the stick. And when it's time to take a shot, you put it down on the side of the pool table and you put your your stick on top. You aim and you shoot and it helps so you can you only need to use the one side so you could still keep playing pool. Um, that's another adaptive device. <clears throat> so others that we have are card holders I talked about. Um, when you have a stroke, your uh, vision can be affected um, to whatever degree, but it could be significantly or slightly. <clears throat> so larger print items always uh, help. So large face cards, um, large print materials. Um, most libraries have large print materials that you can get uh, or you can go online and order things. Uh, large face cards you can order online and they also have them at different stores. Uh, we talked about card shufflers, large size puzzles, book holders. Um, so there are there are book holders that they you put your book in and they have um, brackets so you can hold both sides of the book open so you can with one hand just turn the pages so that's an adaptive device large print crosswords uh, talking books um, which you can go to your lo most local libraries you can get cds that um, are are novels on cd and they're narrated uh, by different people i believe i found one that was narrated by reese weatherspoon for example um, so talking books if you're having if you if you can't read uh, and your vision's been affected that way the talking books would be a benefit um, computer modifications so there's different modifications there's voice um, voice recognition so if you have trouble getting around your computer um, tactilely with your hands you can actually get programs uh, where you can verbally request uh, actions. So um, you can look at Facebook, you can do dictation, you can open Google searches simply by just using specific words. Uh, there's also, if you are legally blind or, or you cannot see the screen, there's also uh, different programs where you you can uh, request the the um, the applications or the icons on the screen and the the computer program the voice will talk back to you and describe what you have selected and read your read your uh, google news and that sort of thing so there's many different programs for uh for adapting to what however you've been affected uh there's one-handed needle craft there's needle threaders uh, the fishing rod holder, paintbrush with grips. So if your fine motor skills have been affected by your stroke, um, let's say you're a painter, for example, and your fine motor, you can't hold something um, as well that's smaller. So the bigger the area that you have, the more um, accuracy you're, you're able to have when you're writing or painting or that sort of thing. So there's paintbrush uh, grips that you can put on top of a paintbrush. So you're you're still able to hold a brush and do your your leisure interest that you you were doing before. Uh, let's say if you're so adult three wheeled bike. So let's say you are an avid biker, but your balance has been affected. 
uh, a three-wheeled bike gives you balance. It's geared higher, so it's easier to pedal. It has a basket, so you can carry stuff with you. And it's an adaptation to an activity that you might have done before that you want to keep doing, but you can't do with a two-wheeled bike. Uh, modified golf balls, uh, those are more so just the golf balls that when you practice your swing and they won't go as far because they have holes in them and they're a little bit lighter. So let's say that you're not quite back to to golfing um, and you're working on your balance because you've had a, a stroke and it's been affected and you're just trying to get back to um, going on the the golf course you can use these balls and they'll help you know they'll help you get stronger as you're working towards going back to golfing uh, the pool cue holder we talked about aquatic therapy uh, that's not uh, an adaptive device as it is an adaptive activity so um, what individuals have been doing and it's becoming a pretty big thing is aquatic therapy so you do your exercises in a pool uh, the benefit to this is uh, increased circulation, the warmth of the water, um, the light, light, uh, the, the lightless, lightness less um, that you get in water. So um, let's say that on dry land, your your balance is it's harder to stand up and that sort of thing. But let's say in, in a pool with someone supervising you, you can kind of get that proper standing and practice walking or that sort of thing in your you're able to get that full form um, and exercise doing that and build muscles that way. Um, just the resistance of the water uh, benefits uh, exercising in, uh, in a pool um, and those sort of things. So there's aquatic therapy. Uh, modified rules for sports and games. So you have things like wheelchair, basketball, um, sledge hockey, where you have the, um, the sleighs. Um, so if you're in a wheelchair, you can you, you can use a sleigh and you can still play hockey. Um, different rules. So um, I've seen um, uh, soccer for individuals with uh, legal legal blindness. So they have um, like a, a bell in the soccer ball and they have uh, assistance with people guiding the person who's playing. So there's all these different modified rules so you can keep playing uh, certain sport games and leisure activities like that. Um, oversized badminton rackets and birdies. So the bigger the area, the 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 more you can um, move around and, and hit the ball. So if you have a larger badminton racket, you know, in your hand or the 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 racket uh, surface area is bigger, then you can still keep doing that activity. So that is that for uh, adaptation show and tell. Um, the other thing that I wanted to touch upon is community resources. So um, there is another uh, stroke education class that talks specifically about community resources, but uh, one of my roles on the unit is to look into and try and connect people with community resources. So there are very different types and they've been affected currently, but we'll still talk about them. Um, so transportation, there's Red Cross, and that is a more affordable, a volunteer picks you up and gets you to point A and point B. There's Handy Transit, so it has a lift in the back of the bus and it's uh, it, it, um, more accessible. Um, there's also different private driving uh, driving companies that will help you. There's uh, Air and Taxi and they have um, accessible vans. And then there's different programs in the community. So there's um, ICANN and th that's a place where you can go and uh, you have exercise classes there. There's cooking education and practice. Uh, there's cognitive education, uh, organizing and planning, different classes like that. There's uh, stroke education for family and patient and clients. Um, so you, and I believe some of those are still offered through Zoom, so that's an example. There's some programs um, at Memorial Hospital that do uh, generally the same thing. Um, there's different groups in the community on a, on a normal day. Um, uh, different seniors groups. Uh, there's the YMCA and they they have programming uh, based around leisure activities. Uh, there's the VON Day Center and they have activities. You can go there for the day and do uh, physical and cognitive uh, leisure based activities. 
Um, so there's all these different things in the community that you can benefit from. And even, even with what's going on right now, there's a lot of different activities that you can get connected to using um, uh, virtual uh, Zoom, Zoom and MS Teams and these different types of uh, video uh, conferencing type uh, activities. So if there's anything that you're interested in, um, don't hesitate to contact myself and we can uh, look into what you what we can get you connected with or keep you doing and that sort of thing. So that is the end of my session. Um, thank you for listening and I hope that you uh, you got some benefit from it.